when we look at this next cycle, we we've seen it a little bit. And that same thing, kind of like we've said that, hey, institutions are coming. It's like, well, we said that now they're saying that. Right. Uh, I think that, again, this is something that we have sort of said, but now these tools are available and there's also an expertise behind them, right? So the, you can't, you can do more than just buy and sell these things now. Like there, there's more going on here, right? Like there's, there's a huge financial, tr you know, traditional market that while again, I always like to like bring this up. I realized that we pushed against it, but guys, a lot of these things are very viable. There's a reason the, these things exist. There's a reason that so much of the world has uh, been brought out of poverty because of technical and like financial literacy. It's very important things. And so we, we have to like purse through and really spend some time. And this is something that I, I like to do this to like push against the, the current crypto narrative is that so many people, and it's, it's the reason I'm excited to talk to yourself and a lot of the people in the space and why we sort of have a foot in each camp. If you, if you just grow up and you went to school and you, you got a bad vibe, maybe, you know, you got stuck with some college loan debt, uh, you know, student loan debt, you had a bad credit card, you hate Biden. And then all of a sudden you're like, man, F those guys. And you walk away and then you see crypto and you're like, okay, well, like this is, you hear, you hear this freedom, you hear, uh, you know, hold your own stuff. You hear Bitcoin, inflation's bad, Bitcoin's good. And you kind of get that in there, which again, all, all very viable things, but you, you just know that you didn't like that and that you do like this. And then you, you, you just, you just reject all of that and you, you forget to like, kind of like learn the magic. Right. So you, you don't understand that, Hey, you know, what's going on with grayscale? Like, how can that be improved? Why is that an issue for Bitcoin? You don't understand wh why an ETF is a good or a bad thing or how to use something like LL or any of these other tools we have. And you, you, you don't even know where the pressure points are or where the, like what we're trying to fix with crypto. Like they, they buy into sort of the people in the narrative, which again is a very positive thing. I'm glad there's people in a narrative that are worth buying into, but we're getting to that point where like, Hey, like let's, let's add some maturity. Let's, let's add some sophistication. And it's, it's so that you don't end up just turning these things into like this big Rube Goldberg that ends up putting out more dollars than you put in. Or there's like, let's build some of the things we kept saying, like there's utility, there's a, a margin. Now there's a space for a competing <laughs> market with a lot of these TradFi systems. And mo most people don't, don't know those things exist for a good reason. So, you know, when we say leverage, leverage is a variety of things. Like you, if you look at like, say Uniswap V3, where there's concentrated liquidity providing, like that's, that's leverage. Like that's a form of leverage, right? Um, if you look at something like LL, that's leverage. Okay. Well, so is the hundred X BitMEX casino. Okay. Those are all radically different things though, right? <laughs> um, in most places, the lowest form of leverage is either the same or more than the absolute like theoretical possible that you could do with LL. So we're saying leverage as in utilize to the best degree, not leverage like, all right, well, hopefully BitMEX is going good and you just basically bet it all on black. Like these are hyper different things. Um, and so as we as we kind of progress with, uh, you know, with LL, we hope that when it, you know, again, it does bring this adoption of outside, they see, okay, some of these guys speak the, the same thing I speak. Uh, and I, I, I'm still a line from Gene Hoffman. He said the, they're cypherpunks in sport coats. And I was like, that's what I'm talking about, man. Like that, that you know, again, like, <laughs> yeah, man. And so, you know, I, I hope uh, when I grow up, I want to be like Gene Hoffman. Um, and so, <laughs> you know, that, you know, we're, we're trying to do that, that same phase where the, like, we're still capitalists. We're trying to get rid of the corruption, right? Like don't, don't get rid of corruption and capitalism. Like it was the corruption we had the problem with. Right. Um, and so again, when I, when I talked with Gene, I was like a, a big issue in the current system is deception and perversion. That's what we're trying to deal with. Many of these things were still really important lending, uh, you know, providing, being able to raise capital, you know, all, all these things are hyper important. What brought this together, they've just been distorted, pushed too far. Right. Or they've been, they've been distorted and lied to. So the, you, you can start to trust things more when you have to trust things less in the sense that, Hey, if we're engaging in smart contracts and Bitcoin, you can be more trusting of that, of that commerce because you don't have to trust median. And, and it opens up a, a, a lot. We, we, you know, we talked a lot about just, just trust in systems in general. Um, and that's, that's where I think that we can progress is, Hey, here's the tool. It's out. It's clean. It's audited. Now you can do what you were trying to do originally in TradFi markets with, without all that corruption and, and shenanigans in between the two of them.